So this is part one of at least two videos. I don't know if I'm going to make more of this parts for if I do um, get any more out of the library, but it is at least two parts of poetry anthologies. <clears throat> so one does have, again, since there's not much in this room, that there's going to be an echo. But anyway, first part does kind of like have theme timeline. And then the second one kind of won't. <laughs> So, the first anthology that I am going to show you is Native Poetry in Canada, a contemporary anthology edited, edited by Jeanette C. Armstrong and Lily Grower. So, it's poetry from the 1960s. Let me see. Yeah, from 1960 to 2000, so 40 years of poetry. And you got about a dozen or so poets. And yeah, you're looking at more than a... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 26, 27, 28, 29. So more than two dozen poets. And what you will have in the contents is the name of the person and what poems and on what page that they will be on. And so she does date one of them that yeah, okay, so reader, readers will find two dates for most poems. Where possible, we have dated each poem according to the date it was written and the date it was published. If only one date is shown, it is the date of publication. Usually, this date indicates the poem was written in the year it was published. In some cases, only publication dates are available. So, each poet... Con contributed to the anthology an artist statement which begins each author's note. Other unattributed statements from authors in these notes have been made to the editors in personal interviews. Works cited in the author's notes such as published interviews and essays are listed below and they have that there. And so you got the name of the person. So this is Chief Dan George date birth and you got a little bit of their own words here like each one will have something and then you get information about them like a, bi a short biography and then you get their po their poems and you do get a few that are do sh are short and you get the date kind of like that so Oh, that's one of the longer ones, like right there. So, and what I find find really cool is you, some poems you get the original native language and then the translation, which I find really cool because I just like... Yeah, yeah, I don't know the language, but it's kind of cool to see that you get that. And then, like some of the, like a lot of, good majority of the poems are like personal and or like historical and like, uh, so like one of his is, I am, I am the Indian, I am the Indian, and the burden lies yet with me. Short but powerful when you come to think of the Native American history, in, not only in Canada, but in the rest of North America and South America. So, and I 
really liked seeing these different poems. Some of them are long and you are getting like that and like some like all of it is like one right after other. You aren't getting like the ones in some of the more recent ones where it's like this one tiny poem there and then you got another tiny poem there. Here they would be just like there, there, there <laughs> kind of thing. And you do get ones that almost look like a story and they are a story. So yeah and so if you are the type of person who wants a look into native aboriginal history you do get a few perspectives from a few different people at least within canada within this book and it is a really good collection of poems so that's off, uh, offering a record of nature native cultural revival as a as it emerged through poetry from the 1960s to the present, the poems, the poets included here adapt English to accommodate native traditions, insights, and rhythms. They use passion, ordering, and above all, a sense of play. Native Poetry Canada suggests both a history of the struggle to be heard and the wealth of nature, native cultures in Canada today. So, and I really love that. So this is the first one, and wow, I've talked that much just about one of them. <laughs> and so the second one is Canadian poetry from the beginnings through the First World War. And so, again, in the table of contents, you get the person, and if there's an, you get anonymous and like what poem on what page. And you are getting what people think traditionally poetry is like this long kind of story type thing and for some that's how got they got their stories was with like accessible poetry but i don't know how like accessible some of these poetry w would be to some and like some are like a few pages long this one is like like really long <laughs> But you do get a few that are shorter, and with this one, it it is one right after the other. And so with so when it gets to a new person, it will say the person, um, year of birth and date, a little bit of biography, and going into their poetry. So you do get a sense of slight history of a slight timeline of Canadian history through at least its poetry and you do get a few different views depending on like the person that they the poet the poems and poets they've chosen but collected works of more than 50 poets in addition to ample rep representation of the verse of Isabel Valence Crawford, W.W. Campbell, Charles D. Roberts, Bliss Cameron, it contains com uh, several complete long narrative poems, including Oliver Goldsmith's The Rising Village and Crawford's Malcolm's Katie. So you get poetry from the early 1600s to the First World War, so you do get a small overlay of uh, Canadian poetry history <laughs> in an introduction to it. So, Canadian poetry from the beginnings through the First World War, selected and with an afterword by Carol Gerson and Gwendolyn Davies. So that's the second one. And then the third one is the best of the best Canadian poetry in English. 10th anniversary edition, Molly Peacock and Anita Leigh, the series editors. So it's a collection of, again, Canadian poetry from like best Canadian poetry 
in from sir from different years 2009 2010 2016 uh, 2008 so they have a few different years so they have they selected certain poems from the best Canadian poetry and put it in this little anthology and you do some you do get short ones some are long you get the name of the person the title of it the poem and from what where it was originally published and what edition of the best Canadian poetry book it was from so this one was from volume published in best Canadian poetry 2011 the next one was from CD2 published in best Canadian poetry 2013 so you do get a range of different poets from Canada and you do get a brief description of the poets at the back and so it does they do talk about um, the collections at the beginning as well so this is another look at Canadian poetry Canadian history whatever you want to have a what you want whatever you want to call it but it is an anthology of different poetries throughout the last little, little while. <laughs> so, yeah, so you do get another different perspective of Canadian literature, poetry, history, whatever, in the best of the best Canadian poetry and 10th anniversary edition. So there is that one. And the last one that I'm going to do for it, this one is Poetry of the First World War, an anthology ended, edited by Tim Kendall. So like the other ones, you do get in the contents, name of the person, year and year of date and birth, and what pages which poems are on. Right now it is blurry, but through that blurb, I'm hoping you guys can kind of see that some you get more than others and then you do get an introduction to the poetry and its connection with the first world war and then you get into it and you get like when it was like written slash public like when it was written now I'm looking for a specific one. I don't I just look at the table of contents. <laughs> so I know this one has the one I am looking for. And at the back, it does have index of titles and first lines. Okay, pretty sure. <laughs> uh, so, likely not gonna find it now and watch it be in the other one. So, this anthology concerns itself with poetry related to the war by poets from Britain and Ireland who lived through part or all of it. The poems selected were written over a period of more than 50 years between autumn 1914 and the autumn 1966. Publication dates range more widely still. Rublin's Kipling's For For All We Have and Are first appeared 
on September 2nd, 1914, whereas two of Igor's Gurney's poems have here are here published for the first time. Okay. So like with the people you get um, their name, dates, and in, like a biography of them and then you get into their poems and again like with the other ones it's right after the other you get one and then you get the next one right after so yeah <laughs> so if you do have an interest in the first world war you do have this to have a look at so poetry of the first world war an anthology so yeah those are the four books that I've chosen for Poem Anthologies Part 1. Happy readings!